Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is May 8th of 2019. It's almost 6 a.m. in the morning. And uh, we just lost power for a, oh, 30 seconds a while ago, but the storm has moved out of the area. And uh, this is going to be a little political. I'm just going to be. So if you're, a lot of you don't like to hear any political stuff. I don't blame you. Because I'm just going to look at the CNN page here. One thing that is interesting, I can pull that up, is uh, well, the story about uh, Donald Trump. You know he. Over 10 years or, or whatever, he he lost over a billion dollars and he was, uh, his business losses were unbelievable. Uh, what's funny, there's a right-wing site, uh, redstate.com. They used to, well, they've always been, they were always a hate site, but I mean, they're not a, you know, not, not a neo Nazi or whatever hate site, but but they used to be a little bit. They would cover some things. Now they uh, they had a change in management or whatever, and they become hardcore uh, out on the fringe. You, you can't, you know, they twist everything and just but. They did cover, I checked, uh, let's see, this, <clears throat> this here, breaking New York Times obtains Trump's tax information for the years 1985, to, and they actually, uh, they actually covered it uh, with no, they just, they just went ahead and covered it, and they didn't say, you know, this is the lies from the communist, you know, left wing or, you know, whatever. They just actually covered it. That's kind of strange. Because other stuff they don't, uh, don't even come anywhere. So I really don't come here. I used to come here just to see when they, before they had the management change, I'd come to see what, you know, some people who were pretty far right, <clears throat> what they would, what they would, were thinking. Now it's become there's absolutely no reason to go there because it's like they're out in <laughs> out in Lulu Land or something. They're just uh, no, nothing. There's but uh, I came over this time and I was surprised that they just actually I can show it to you. I mean I'm not gonna. Here's the uh, you know they uh, you know they covered and they even you know put you know <clears throat> here are the five takeaways or whatever from it and. Uh, so that's surprising. Back when they were not totally insane before the new management, they had a couple of management changes, I think. But uh, back before that, my major complaint, and I called them, I would call them a hate site then. But the reason I did that was because they had apparently orders or they had all of their word processing system in there. Everybody, if you, they couldn't say like uh, union leaders or uh, working men or they would, it would have to, they, it would be uh, union thugs, you know, so if teachers were on strike, it would be uh, union thugs were on, are on strike. Uh, teachers, you know, whatever, and it would be thugs, union thugs, union thugs. And uh, what was the other? It was something that they they just couldn't say, you know, they must have had orders. Like, you'll be fired if you say uh, union representatives or if you say uh, union leaders or if you say something like that. They had to have that in there. It's so stupid. I mean, they're people, they don't have to preach to them because they'll believe anything, but you positively, 
Well, in the old days, well, when we still have, I guess, communism now, because of the way things have gone in Russia, but it used to be that Radio Moscow, Radio Peking, Radio Havana, Cuba, and all those communist countries, their broadcasts, their radio, shortwave radio broadcast, well, all their, you know, even when it wasn't shortwave, uh, it was uh, the warmongering United States government, uh, just, you know, everything they had to predicate it with that. That doesn't convince, I mean, somebody who, people who are mentally ill, that might convince them. But that doesn't, doing that doesn't, you know. But uh, Radio Prague, Czechoslovakia, they didn't really do that. They, at least their international broad, you know, Radio Prague, Czechoslovakia, they were more, they knew better. They were more honest or more, you know, they still had their agenda. When they read the news, they'd say, uh, the United States, you know, is uh, taking in uh, Nazi war criminal, which is true. <laughs> we were, you know, actually, but, you know, they would do stuff like that. And, uh, but they didn't do the, and this doesn't, this doesn't work. Uh, they, I mean, it, their people, these right wing, they, they don't have to do that. Those people, you just tell them, you know, whatever, whatever their group is, you know, you can tell them if you're, if your group is, you know, hardcore fundamentalist uh, Baptist or something, uh, you don't have to hit them over the head. You just can say, you know, well, the, you know, the earth is 10,000 years old. And they'll, that's, you know, that's what they learned if they went to their Bible college. That's what they learn in their church and stuff like that. But you don't have to. Uh, but anyway, it was just, it was just interesting that uh, this site is one story. This is not good that, you know, it looks like where Iran is. You know, we had a deal and uh, the entire world had a deal with... Uh, Iran and Trump came in and threw it out like what dish water or you know he threw it out and so now they they're throwing out uh, and we put you know restrictions on them the rest of the world you know we had made a deal and uh, now it looks like I'm I'm afraid I hope this isn't true I'm afraid that, you know, Trump, boy, he lies all the time about everything. <clears throat> so no matter what he says, I don't believe him. Uh, but I'm fearful that, uh, and he'll do anything to keep from, you know, not, he, he's made comments or whatever recently that uh, he should have an extra two years because the Democrats buy investigating him, I mean, that's I mean, it's just mind-boggling that he would say, say things like that. You know, we have a, con he pays no attention. He said, you know, well, the, the Constitution just gets in my way. And he swore an oath, you know, everybody, I, when I was a police officer, I swore an oath, you know, the same oath. Uh, this congressman, you know, everybody swears the oath to protect or defend the Constitution. He invite you know, and uh, he. But I'm what I'm fearful of is that he may get us into deliberately into a conflict with Iran in order to somehow keep him. He thinks in office, either get him elected because we could have a if we were in a a war. You know, the American people might usually, they, in, it, in every country, you know, you start a war and then if you're an unpopular leader, you know, the nation rallies to your support. And uh, I'm afraid he may do that. That's bad. 
it's bad that you have to think that that might could happen. He doesn't have the power that he thinks that he does. But he doesn't know that. So I hope he's not getting us into a conflict with Iran. The, Iran has a tremendous number of young people and they actually they actually like the United States. They, I'm sure they don't like some of our policies. But they want more freedom in their country. They want but if we get into a conflict with them, they're going to uh, they're going to rally behind their their leaders, and we're going to be the great Satan. We're going to be the great enemy. We should be doing things to encourage those young people to emulate us and to embrace the type of freedoms that we have or had. My God. I'm having cheese. It's although it's not cheese. It it's a Walmart brand. This I guess at my breakfast. Anyway, the news. Uh, I guess Uber and Lyft drivers are going on strike. Not all of them, but. We don't own a car, so we, well, my daughter lives in the same apartment complex. And she has a car. I got two doctor's appointments this month, so she's going to take me. I told her I'd take the Uber, but uh, yeah, hang on a second here. Anyway, this is not good that we're, we made some progress with, you know, Iran. I hope that, I think we're saying that Iran is moving missiles and things around in dangerous areas where it could attack shipping that comes through, you know, I forget what that, the Straits of such and such where oil, tremendous numbers of oil ships, you know, tanker ships. And so there's a lot, you know, that, a lot of bad stuff that can happen. New York Times newspaper came up with not Trump's tax returns, but some type of a sheet that the Internal Revenue Service has, and I guess businesses can get it, and I don't know, you know. But uh, it shows that Trump, even during the time that he put the book out, uh, The Art of the Deal or whatever, he was losing... Uh, tons and tons of money. In fact, he was like way up there, you know, the number one person who was a business person who's losing money. He was up there way above everybody else. So, uh, uh, that school shooting in Colorado. Did you see this? Man, I... If you, if you ever think about snakes, which I do, <laughs> you don't want to see this. But anyway, avert your eyes. A guy came up to a friend's you know, house to visit or whatever. Let's see. Uh, 
Oh, that would scare the hell out of me. The video has... It's... Oh, yuck. I don't like snakes. I don't like bugs. I never had any real desire to go camping. You know. Now, I tried to get in the military. I, wouldn't have, I wanted to make a career out of the military. Probably it's a good thing I didn't. I, uh, that was, I went to a military high school, a Catholic military high school, and, uh, well, I, you know, I wasn't, like, other high school students are thinking about what they're going to do, you know, I was, at, my thing was, I was going to join the Army and stay 20 years and then retire from the Army. And uh, it never occurred to me that I had hearing loss that would keep me out. But actually what kept me out was I was 40 pounds under the minimum weight requirement. And uh, that kept me out. And so I guess it's a good thing that that kept me out because what would have happened the way they did, like, you know, first I went down to enlist and they would have uh, signed me up. Because, well, except they filling out the health thing. And I said, only thing wrong with me is I'm a little underweight. I thought, I didn't know they rejected at that time anybody for being underweight. But I just thought, everybody thought, you know, you go into the military and they built you up, you know. Well, they had a, he checked, oh, you're underweight. You know, height, what's your height? What's your weight? Okay. Then a couple years later, I got the notice for the selective service physical. And I went down for that. And they actually, <laughs> I mean, out of, I've told this before, out of 200 people that were there for the selective service physical, the doctor came over to me and me only and said, have you been in the hospital? You know, no. Have you been sick? No. no. So anyway, when they were doing the stuff that they did, checking, uh, they were rejecting a whole bunch of football players for bad knees and stuff like that. And uh, when... Uh, when they put down the height and weight and everything, I guess that was something that didn't they didn't normally, you know. Anyway, I got a card that said one one A, you know. So I went down to the list. The recruiter said, uh, "Well, I'd have been out to have you on the list. Everybody who's one A, you, you know, and I'd been contacting you." So anyway, I was filling out paperwork and stuff, and I said, "Well, the only thing is, I was down here a couple of years ago. I wanted to go in the military. Now I'm getting a, you know." you know, starting late. And he said, why, did you, you know, and I said, well, wait. And he said, just a minute, he called over to the office, the medical plane, and uh, they said, oh, just a second. Oh, yeah, we'll send him a new card, you know. So I, but what, well, what was the good thing about that was, I, the hearing I just totally forgot about, although I have, since I was in grade school, bad hearing in both ears. It just never occurred to me. What, what was a good thing in a way was uh, that first time I went, if I had not been uh, rejected because of, you know, the recruiter, if he hadn't said no, he would have signed me up, done all that. In fact, uh, I was going to be teletype repair. That was what they had, you know, okay, you want to be a teletype repair person? Okay. So... <laughs> What would have happened was I'd have, they'd put me on a bus or a train, sent me down to the the uh, camp, and then the first week or so, whatever they do, you know, they do a battery of testing, all kinds of stuff, everything, and they, that would have been a sit-down thing with the headphones on and the machines and that kind of stuff, and they would have found the and that would have been embarrassing because they'd have, you know, put me on a bus or a train back to back home, you know. And then all my friends and my parents, you know, would have told people, you know. I'd... I'm reminding you, medication. What are you reminding me? I'm reminding you, medication. 
Thank you. Uh, that would have makes my dad, you know, had I'm sure would have told his the people he worked with, hey, my son went in the army, you know. And then I'd have showed up back home a week later or something, or two weeks later or something. Uh, so, let's see, a woman, uh, let's see. I'm really kind of tired of hearing about, you know, the English, the, U, the royal family having babies and stuff. I don't know. You know, it seems like every time you hear about some refugee, uh, you know, some bad situation, and somebody ends up being freed or getting someplace, it's, it seems like it's always Canada is taking them in. What Donald Trump doesn't understand and what the people that are, that are supporting him, a lot of people that are supporting him is our law and international law. Well, let's take internet. Of course, if you say international law here in the United States or if you say you know, United Nations or whatever, uh, the right wing, it's like F the, you know, United Nations. We're not, you know, we don't, you know, it's just a thing. But, uh, you know, international law, all the nations have agreed that if refugees come to your border, uh, you can't just, you know, shoot them or push their boat back in the water or whatever. You have to allow them to, uh, you have to check, you know, check them out or whatever. And if they're actually are refugees, if and there's conditions, you know, there's political, you know, there's religious uh, refugees and whatever. But if you have somebody that shows up someplace like at the United States and person, you know, they ask them the questions or whatever they, you know, if somebody shows up and uh, says, you know, why? Do, well, you ask them, you know, why do you want to? Get come, why are you in the United States, you know? And the person says, well, you know, uh, back home I was making the minimum wage and things are pretty good, you know, and nice neighborhood and all that kind of stuff, but I want to come up here and get a job making more money. Sorry. But if the person shows up and, has, you know, can prove it or there's, you know, it can be, you know, evaluated something, the person shows up, you know, I'm, you know, I'm Baptist and the, the other people in the country aren't and they've been killing us and they don't, blah, blah, you know, oh, okay, religious, you know. If you show up and, you know, hey, you know, my politics or I'm a communist or I'm a, you know, a Republican or whatever would happen to be, you know, and, you know, they're killing us or whatever, political refugee, you know, you have to take those in. So there are international laws that have been agreed on, and we agreed on them. And, you know, people, they don't have to show, you know, they should show up at the, you know, here are our entrance places. They should show up there. <clears throat> but internationally, they don't have to. If they were in, you know, they're fleeing whatever the problem is, they can just enter your country. And then, of course, you, you know, you make contact with them. And uh, then you sort out what the situation is. And if it's, if they are legitimately refugees, it's internationally, and it's in our national law also says that. But the, you know, the right wing, you know, doesn't understand that, will never understand it. And just positively would never, they just won't accept it. But, you know, we are subject, you know, we have entered into, we have to, all the nations of the world. I'm sorry, I'm hungry. You have to enter into, you know, back, you know, back in the 1800s, maybe the United States with an ocean on each side and Mexico and Canada, you know, either side of us. Even then, you actually needed, inter, you know, international laws. But 
the way the world now is, if you don't have international laws and organizations like the International Telecommunications Union, which is headquartered as an as a United Nations organization or whatever, and it's headquartered in Geneva, Switzerland, I believe. It's there's things if you if you don't have these agreements, international agreements, if you're not in these things, you better not get you better not even get on a ship. If you get on a ship, it's not going to end well. If you don't have international, you know. If your ship gets into difficulty, or if your ship goes in a certain area or whatever, if you don't have these things, you're screwed. Same with aircraft flying, you know. If you don't have these international agreements, it would be positively unsafe to fly. I guess you could fly from, probably not even that, from Kansas City, Missouri to Dallas, Texas or something, but you better not be trying to fly, you know, outside the United States to some place. You're going to run into other aircraft or you're not going to, you know, same with radios, you know, or the International Telecommunications. They agree on radio frequencies that are used and ones that aren't used. They agree on, you know, these are emergency channels that are used for emergency purposes. These are, you know, and what will happen when, and the words that will be used and and these are the international, these are frequencies that you use for your local, you know, TV, you know, you'd have other nations would be at just, you know, we need international cooperation. And there's a certain group of people who don't want that. I'm not sure when you, I guess the further back you go, Maybe the it would get a little easier, but now you know aircraft, <coughs> ships, and everything else. You know they can carry the plague and everything if you don't have agreements. I did. I don't think that. It says here, new satellite images may reveal China's next aircraft carrier. I didn't think they had any. Or maybe they just have one or two. I think we have 18. I think we have more aircraft carriers than like the next 25 countries or whatever. And we spend more money than, I don't know, the next 15 or 20, you know, if you add together Russia, China, Great Britain, France, Germany. We I think we spend more money than like 18 countries or something like that. <sighs> I'm thinking about getting this. I have I bought the 8-inch one. I don't even know where it is. I don't even use it. I use my cell phone actually for controlling the uh, echo devices and the lights that I have. Two lights in here that are controlled and stuff. I don't even know where the, the 8 inch one is, but this 10 inch one is new and improved. and. That's really, for that price, I mean, you know, for $119, I think I'll probably be getting one of these. And I think what I might just do is, I own two Echo devices. Uh, one's in my room, as you heard a while ago, although I use the A word. And then there's one in the kitchen dining room, and <clears throat> we use the E word. But uh, I think I may get this and replace the one I have, the device here, and use this and just have it, you know, so I'd have the screen and everything. I may get it and then not, you know, do anything with it. Um, 
I received this, I think, yesterday. And I made a video. Whoops, this isn't it. This is it. Let's see. And uh, I got it from my Panasonic G7. And it's in, you know, it's in here. The uh, power line. I don't know if you can see it. It's over here. I have it disconnected right now. Uh, don't go on the floor. And uh, I, uh, I had it like this. You know, well, the, the trap, the, the door open here where the <clears throat> regular battery would go in, replaced now by this. And uh, I couldn't get the door closed. And uh, uh, one of the fans of my, when I say that, sometimes my family laugh at me, but it told me about the little area right here that you can pop that out and that way you can close the door. So since I want to try to start using this uh, for making videos for YouTube and mainly to set up here, uh, I don't want to have to worry about the battery going dead on me right in the middle of, uh, so with this hooked up to the AC, I have, won't have to worry about that little problem. So, ah, I, uh, I think that's, well, wait a minute, let's go back here. Uh, today's Wednesday and, uh, the, I guess Congress is going to decide on whether they're going to charge, charge Attorney General Barr with contempt or what. Uh, President Trump does not understand, my God, I've raved about this before and it's driving me crazy. He doesn't understand how our system of government works. He just doesn't understand it. And he swore an oath, you know, to, and it's too bad that what what we need is for the, if the Republicans, sure, they're still, they could still support him. But the Republicans in Congress, if they would just say no, then they then they could show him that that are there are three co-equal branches of the you know U.S. government, the presidency, you know the Congress, the legislature, you know, and the, the courts, you know, Supreme Court, and uh, all the Republicans would have to do, and just be a few of them would just be. And, and they should, and it just shows how they really, that with the Republicans in Congress, you know, all they care about is themselves and being reelected because if the executive branch gets away with the type of stuff that Trump is doing, you know, what's going to happen, you know, when uh, the Democrats elect somebody who the Republicans really don't like and who, you know, of course they don't like, you know, but I mean, then that president will say, well, no, you know, this, you know, the precedent has been established. Uh, I can, you know, thumb my nose at Congress. Uh, Congress has no power. I'm the supreme power. So the you know, the Republicans in Congress really shouldn't. I know they'd ha they wouldn't have to. You know, they don't have to say Donald Trump is a liar. Donald Trump is, you know, the worst person, the worst president we've ever had. And, and they don't have to say, well, I shouldn't have voted for him or whatever. They could still do their little game shit or whatever. But they, on the, these things here where the integrity and the credibility and their authority that they have, if they let him erode this, even the Supreme Court Justice, you know, who was appointed by, you know, a Republican president, 
he came out a while back. He didn't make real big news, but he came out and he, uh, I don't, I think he only mentioned President Trump once, but what he did is he stood up for the judiciary and said, you know, there are no, you know, Republican Supreme Court justices or ju or even judge, you know, wasn't talking just about the Supreme Court. He said there are no Republican, you know, justices. There are no Democrat, you know, Democratic justices. There are just, you know, justices who are, you know, interpreting the law and ruling on the law the way it should be. And what and you know, I sort of slapped president, but which is unheard of, because the Supreme Court it usually. They have their power, they know they have their power, and they, they guard their power, but they don't usually, you know. And if something if some things come up having to do with, like the legislature, which is a separate branch, they will say something comes before the court, and a lot of times, depending on what it is, they'll say this is a matter that the legislature, you know, should handle by laws and that type of stuff, so... Ooh, hundreds of students stranded at Texas school as a downpour turns to flooding. I bet the kids had fun. I'm in Texas, by the way, Fort Worth, Texas. Hundreds of students were stranded in an elementary, well, probably elementary school kids wouldn't have as much, you know, not like high school kids would be, you know, a massive. Well, we're looking at the incredible amounts of rain oh, right yeah. through what Texas on Tuesday. I hate this, you know. There's actually, I think I might even have it installed, a plug in that. Hundreds of students were stranded in an elementary school Tuesday night as heavy rains hit southeast Texas. A massive downpour kept buses and parents off the roads in Cleveland, Texas, and forced Southside Elementary to keep students inside. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. They I guess they have low-lying areas there and the buses couldn't get through and whatever. The kids look happy here. And I guess they have a cafeteria. And I guess the cafeteria had, you know, ample supply of food and... So, but if it had been high school kids, they'd have been, you know... They'd have been rocking and rolling. They'd have been skateboarding down the halls of the school, <laughs> dancing, no telling what they would be doing. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching. I know this is uh, sort of crap, but uh, um, I do want to make videos from time to time. It, the, YouTube wants that too. They want you to make frequent videos. I I am going to do something though. Let me let me do go there. Um, let me go to YouTube and uh, by the way, this gentleman here. Uh, view of the fifth column or whatever. He makes really good videos. Um, oh, okay, I want to go here. I love movies and TV shows, you know, stuff. Uh, I What I'm going to do is um, create a playlist. I was thinking I should do that because I'm going to, yeah, see, I have a bunch of pay, playlists here. You know, hardware and software reviews, uh, uh, popular uploads, my play, you know, Howard's Notebook playlist, uh, digital camera and playlists and whatever. I'm going to create a, maybe two, maybe let's say one. I'm going to cr create a playlist and I, if I, 
if the entire video is about a TV show or a movie or something like that, I'll put it in that playlist. But what I'll also put in there is when I like a really like a movie or a TV show, if on YouTube there is a uh, uh, not preview, what do you call it? Where they show a, a little clip of it or whatever. I'll put that video, even though I didn't make that video, I'll put it in the playlist. So if you go to that playlist, you're going to find, but I'll just put the ones in there that are ones that I like. So if you see a, a movie in that playlist, uh, that's because I, you know, I like the movie and I recommend it. And it won't just be, um, new ones. I'm going to, every time I think, okay, like, uh, the Flim Flam Man, I love that movie, Clockwork Orange, uh, things like that. Uh, I'll put those in there. So you'll be able to go and see, okay, Jim likes all of these. And here is the, oh, uh, well, okay, we'll just do that. Well, because then I guess I'll, whoops, I want to go back to YouTube. Okay. Um, I will do a clock work orange Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Well, anyway, this appears to be... No, this is where you can actually buy it. Because uh, I'm looking for the word here. What, do you, what the hell do you call that? Anyway, I wonder... I guess if it's actually on YouTube... And it's and you can pay for it. Uh, now the Flim Flam Man is somebody has put it on YouTube in segments, and it's not. Uh, it's been split up, and the recording of it is not too good. So I won't put it. What I'll put is the uh, video. But in this case, like a Clockwork Orange, apparently for three ninety nine. Uh, you can watch it on YouTube. It's two minutes, two hours and 16 minutes. So I will um, put uh, put that. So I'll be doing that. No, you don't call it trailer. What the hell do you call it? Anyway. Thank you for watching.